Hey everyone, I hope you're doing well. I wanted to spend a few minutes and record a screencast here on status epilepticus. All right, so status epilepticus is basically when a seizure is more than just a normal standard seizure. Okay, it's life threatening. It's when the neurologic system, the, the central nervous system, the brain is continually in a seizing state or repeated seizures one after the other without allowing the patient to regain consciousness. Um, it is life threatening in the fact that the electrical um, activity throughout the brain continuous can essentially fry the circuits or uh, cause significant hypoxia because of disordered breathing or lack of breathing um, causing further uh, injury and, and anoxic brain injury. So it is life-threatening and needs to be treated as an emergency. So the way we define it is it is a continuous seizure or repetitive seizures that do not allow the patient to regain consciousness between seizures and, and generally lasting more than five minutes in duration. Most regular standard run-of-the-mill seizures are going to last less than five minutes and some of them far, la far less than five minutes. Um, most often though, uh, status epilepticus is due to either anti-convulsant anti withdrawal um, or significant metabolic disturbances, trauma, those kinds of things, okay? So if a patient is normally taking, let's say, carbamazepine for their seizures, and then maybe they run out of their medication and they don't make it to the pharmacy in time, and maybe they go three or four days without their medication, and their serum level of that drug falls, um, and they uh, then go into seizures, they're at risk of potentially developing status epilepticus. Okay, uh, metabolic disturbances such as uh, you know metabolic derangement due to uncontrolled diabetes, uh, lactic acidosis, things like that. Um, drug toxicity, CNS infections, tumors, uh, refractory epilepsy, meaning just a person who just no matter what you try to start them on, uh, doesn't seem to ever get on top of the seizure, and then head trauma. Um, I've had a few cases of status epilepticus, and my patients with status epilepticus were head trauma patients. One of them was a patient who suffered a pretty significant uh, depressed comminuted skull fracture, and a bone fragment had been pushed down into the cortex, and that was the cause of the repeated seizure activity. Okay, We do consider this a do not miss life-threatening condition, and you want to act very quickly once you decide this person is, in fact, in status. So stopping the seizure quickly uh, involves IV drugs, okay? Um, so starting an IV on the patient if they don't already have one, and then pushing the appropriate drug. And there's a different, there's a specific regimen that we work through with different first-line drugs, and then second-line option, and then one third-line option. So the first-line therapy generally for the most part should control the seizures okay the majority of patients in status epilepticus that seizure will be halted by one of these benzodiazepines now some won't and that's when you go on to the second line drugs which we'll talk about on the next slide but the first line drugs are benzodiazepines either diazepam or lorazepam um, diazepam is given IV in incremental doses, lorazepam is a little laster, uh, longer lasting and uh, given IV in one big dose and can be repeated if needed. Um, so diazepam generally provides 30 to 40 minutes of seizure-free activity before either re receiving a second dose or a loading dose of an anticonvulsant. Um, lorazepam is from my experience with providers in the ER and other neuro um, providers is generally preferred by some clinicians because it actually has a longer duration. You, it, it buys you more than that 30 to 40 minute window. Okay, so that's first line therapy. And like I said, most patients will come out of status with a uh, benzodiazepine. However, if the benzodiazepine does not work, then move on to the second line therapy. Uh, two, op two main options here, uh, phenytoin and phosphenytoin, I'm kind of counting as one option. They're a very similar drug, 
Okay. Uh, and then Keppra, lever Levetiracetum. So let's talk about phenytoin and phosphenytoin. Um, you can be, these can be administered by IV loading dose. It needs to be administered slowly, however, over about 20 to 30 minutes because it has several risks with rapid IV uh, infusion, including vascular tissue injury, uh, cardiovascular collapse with hypotension, and then uh, Another risk is purple glove syndrome, which is a dark discoloration uh, from the injection site to the distal thumb, which has a lot of pain and swelling and, and is due to vascular injury. Okay. Uh, phosphenatoin can be administered a little bit faster than phenytoin, um, and, uh, but both drugs uh, are effectively doing the same thing in the body, um, can be a pretty potent anticonvulsant and uh, I've used before and, and works quite well for patients. Uh, Levetiracetum or Keppra is becoming more preferred and more popular um, for most providers for a few reasons. Um, it can be administered fairly quickly as an IV bolus without um, as much concern of things like hypotension and cardiovascular collapse. Additionally, it has a lower soda, uh, side effect profile. It's tolerated well by our patients. And uh, one nice thing is we don't. there's no need to check serum levels of Keppra. Um, you can check a serum level of Keppra, but it's not necessary. You just give the appropriate dose for the, the situation and uh, shouldn't cause any significant toxicity, where with phenytoin or phosphenytoin, you do need to, uh, over the next couple of days, keep an eye on, and even within that first day of administration, keep an eye on serum level to make sure that you did not uh, bring them up to toxic levels of that drug. Not a concern with Keppra, so many go with Keppra these days. Now, let's say the benzos didn't work, so then you went on to phenytoin or phosphenytoin or Keppra, and you're still not able to pull this patient out of the seizure. It's been several minutes now, uh, even 20 to 30 minutes, and, and nothing seems to be working. It's becoming more of a dire situation. Okay, that's when we go into our third line drug. And at this point, uh, phenobarbital is the drug of choice if the others have failed. Um, phenobarbital is a barbiturate. Um, it pretty much will stop any seizure. Um, the problem is it has significant concerns of respiratory depression, respiratory compromise. Um, it, it, it essentially is placing the patient in a medically induced coma. It's putting the entire brain to sleep. So you're putting the, you're using the CNS depression effect of this, this medication uh, to put the brain to sleep, stopping the seizure. But there are a lot of potential side effects from that that need to be considered, such as respiratory collapse um, and other potentially life-threatening issues. So it is not the drug of first choice. It's the drug of third choice. But if none of the other options are working, phenobarbital is there to seal the deal. Okay, so hopefully this um, has been helpful for you. Um, I, uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thank you.